Hey, this is Steve from Legit Tech Tutorials, so welcome back to my product design series of CodeFlow. So, uh, after that uh, last Friday that I uh, did the first video uh, introducing the series, the product design series for CodeFlow, uh, I talked about making a Trello. I made a uh, pretty simple one for the product design process, and I'm going to go over how this is going to work, and also what uh, the features I came up with off of that Kickstarter page. So, uh, how it's going to work is basically I'm going to have a feature list and I'm going to be moving the feature list across these other, um, well not the feature list, but I'm going to be moving the individual cards across these different lists to show how far they are in the, um, how, uh, to show how far they are in the, uh, in the, in the process. So, how, how far they've developed. So when I start working on stuff, they will move over to the in progress. When it's working and prototype, and then when it's almost done, it'll be rough, and then finished features. I might change this. This doesn't really make any sense, but whatever. And then uh, finished features. So it starts over here in the feature list. The, this is the this is the potential feature list. Goes over, goes over, goes over, goes over. Okay. So, uh, that being said, let's look at, uh, oh, let's talk about the, the labels. So, I have uh, four different colored labels as of right now. Red is most important. Orange is um, least uh, mo medium importance. Yellow is small importance. And green is least important. So, in the development, we're going to be working on the ones that have red as a label first and then orange, and then yellow, and then green. So first, let's take a look at uh, code editor. So the code editor part is the main part that we're going to be working on. So if we go in here and look at what I have wrote down for the code editor, the code editor is a full code editor for any programming language reachable from many places in CodeFlow. Won't have uh, a syntax checker and prototype, but might be a perspective addition. It will require two parts. So the first part is the file browser. So the file browser is basically the, and this is the in-app file browser. This is, you know, a Windows file browser, right? Uh, what was it called? The, um, something Explorer, a Windows Explorer. So Windows Explorer is a um, Windows file browser. But we're going to need our own file browser inside of our app in order to open things Um, in order to be able to open uh, open the the files to be able to integrate them into CodeFlow, so what I mean by that is that that's a place that you would go in that you would pull up a file such as a .txt, .java, um, .c++, um, any sort of any sort of file system .c, any sort of file system like that. So you take it you and you import it in, and when you import it in it will basically open it up in the text editor as a giant source code file, just like you'd normally see it if you opened it up in any sort of any other engine. And then you'd go in there and then you would select, you know, this is a segment, this is this is the file, this is a segment, this is an action, this is the individual lines. So you basically integrate it, integrate a you go backwards kind of from the source code file to adding it to laying it out in this kind of Trello format. So this would be your file, this would be your segment, inside here is your action, and then inside that action there's a uh, source, uh, source code. So you'd have a giant source code file, and then you would um, break it down, edit the source code file so that you break it down into these pieces. So that's why you would need to upload, and that's why you would need a, um, a Sorry about that, it's my cat. So you need a, uh, oops, I close it. So you need a file browser with a save and load feature. So the load feature is to bring in the text document or the Java document, I'll just call them text documents from now, or a source, source file. You bring in your source file and then you bring it into the uh, text editor and then you, 
you basically say what's the segments, what's the actions, what are the what are the files, what are the individual lines of code, and then that will basically build a skeleton and code flow for you that you could expand on. And then when you're done with that, you would want to save save your file. So to be able to, you'll do ha you have to do actually you'll have to do two things. You have to save in, in app. We'll have to save to the Java file whenever you edit something, and we'll also have to save a layout file for CodeFlow inside of the engine, uh, inside of the app, so that it uh, saves your layout of how you have things laid out. So you're gonna need to do two things there. But again, you need a save and load, right? And uh, so here in my comments, I have a uh, a few things. So this I'm this is kind of a, I want to do this uh, quicker than slower. Uh, of course, once a week, you know, it's, it's definitely slow. But um, you know, if, if if I have the opportunity to buy scripts, I will do so. That being uh, buy pre-built assets on the Unity Asset Store. And if they're available and I have the option to do so, I will do so. So these are actually links to the asset store of where some uh, save and load file browsers are. So that will give me a um, quick boost of speed and uh, be able to quick uh, be able to you know um, go go along in the uh, the development process quicker. And also, I will I will basically go through, um, go through the the source code, figure out how it works, and show you guys how it works as well. But it will give us a good boost of speed. <laughs> so uh, today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on the text editor part, and then when we're done with the text editor part, we will be working on the file browser part. And then when we're done with that, we move on to an orange or a yellow or uh, a red if we will we'd work, go to an orange. But then if between now and then I have another red, we'd work on the red. Okay, so we're going to move this card into in progress, into the in progress list. And now we are in progress of the code editor. So hopefully we keep this nice and organized so we know what we're working on, what's finished, what's coming up. And maybe you guys could go in and add comments to... Uh, to this stuff, I'll try to put this uh, this Trello link in the description. All right, so uh, here we are in Unity again. Uh, Co CodeFlow is going to be built on Unity. Unity is actually a game engine. If you're not familiar, and uh, if you're not familiar with Unity, the reason why I'm using this is number one, you can pretty much build almost anything off of Unity. So I do some game design as well, as well as I want to do some app design. So. You know, it's kind of the best of both worlds. You could design games, very powerful games, and also you could design apps in it. I had a, I had a, f a friend that um, I know from school that developed a product and actually went to market and had a pretty successful Indiegogo. And um, his app that he uses to control is basically a mechatronics project. Uh, he uses an app on your phone to control motors and uh, the app on the phone runs off of Unity and he's gone to many big events very large uh, very large prestigious events and showed it to the press of very large news outlets with a a uh, app that runs off of Unity so you know if that's not uh, evidence enough that you can do it with Unity you know, I don't know what else it is. So that being said, I would like to really increase my um, skills with with Unity. So that's why I am doing it in Unity, and I know it's powerful enough to do the job. So that's how it's going to go. All right. So uh, what I have here is this is actually some remnants of when I was starting to prototype it back in the day. Um, so I didn't want to start completely over because I have some some good stuff in here so I'll just go through here and check back through it because I haven't I haven't looked through it in about uh, four months or so so I will uh, go back through and relearn it for myself and also talk to you guys about how uh, how I um, I did this uh, this piece here uh, did the code that you see here okay 
So, uh, as you see here, what I started to do, and I'll go over what I did if you're not familiar with Unity here, so you guys could start. So it's basically starting from scratch almost, as far as uh, that you guys know everything here. So, um, you could do two type of things in this type of application that's basically a UI data-driven application. It's not really a game or asset-driven. It's not really an asset-driven application. It's a UI-driven application. You do two types of things. You could uh, why Unity is very powerful is you could have in-game, you know, 3D models and stuff like that, which my buddy used, you know, to to simulate other hardware, you know, to simulate his motors in 3D space and to be able to tell, you know, where this thing moves and where that thing moves. So it have a UI. You would have your motor there, and then it would like you click on a piece that you want to control and then it would like rotate that piece bring up a UI say what do you want it to do what control do you want to attach to what button do you want it to attach to in the UI stuff like that so very very powerful with that type of thing I would like to um, have that used um, in the future but right now I don't have that being used um, and then the second thing is it has a great 2D or 3D uh, UI system, gen just general flat UI system. And right now I'm in 2D as you see up here, and then here's 3D. So here you can see it in the 3D space, here's in the, the 2D space. So so I am, uh, I'm generally going to be working in the 2D space. Uh, as of right now. Later on I'll do the, the 3D space and uh, have some sort of dynamic scene uh, where something like that happens. But right now I'm just going to work in the 2D space and uh, I'm going to be working in the Unity uh, UI engine. The Unity, uh, not the UI engine, the UI part of the Unity engine. So the the UI became very powerful in update 4.6 and we are now in the uh, newest version 5.5.0 F3 and in 4.6 they made this dynamic uh, scalable uh, UI system based on NGUI that allows it to scale to any sort of uh, phone or PC size or uh, PC resolution any sort of resolution or screen size so it makes it very powerful and uh, makes it work on pretty much any platform and I could develop it for any platform. Also this is a multi-platform engine, you know, or app, you know, it's a game engine, multi-platform game engine where you could pretty much publish to almost any any sort of uh, any sort of platform possible. Right now I'm thinking it's just PC Mac standalone and then maybe do WebGL or something like that. And then maybe do some uh, some Android or iOS apps. We'll figure it out. But what, for right now, I'm just saying mainly focus around the standalone uh, PC, Mac, and Linux standalone kit. And then maybe WebGL. Okay. So. Da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, so what I was doing here is I was working on the text editor part. And the text editor... Uh, use the UI system like I said and if you're not familiar with Unity to get the UI system to work you go into game object UI and then you create a canvas first so this here is my canvas code canvas right which is basically um, this box oops that's not what I wanted to do it's basically this box here And I guess I don't have it as overlay. Oh, it's in world space. Don't really want to do that. Sc uh, screen space overlay. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do camera overlay. There we go. Okay. So what I did is I went into Code Canvas, and in Code Canvas you have three different choices. You could have it inside world space and have it rotate. You know, have it basically a floating plane inside of world space, which is a 3D space. Uh, which is kind of cool. You could have it as a screen space overlay, which basically overlays over, you know, what you see. Or you have um, screen space camera. So I'm going to attach it to my view camera, so it moves around if my camera moves around for some strange reason. So that is attached to the code canvas. So this is the code canvas, and then is basically the container for the UI elements. 
and then you add the UI elements inside of the editor, inside the, 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 the canvas. So here I have a UI text is the start. I don't know what the start is for. Can't remember why I had that. Anyways, and then here's a uh, node one. So I guess this is these are just two prompts. Oh, these are for uh, these are for testing the the drag. I'll talk about the drag in a second. And then code is the um, game object UI. It is a input field. So the input field allows you to go in here and actually edit the text. So those are the three things that I have. I have a text, a text, and a um, text field. So now let me show you what type of uh, things I got it to do so far. So when you want to run the app, you hit the play button here at the top, and then it starts to run the app. And there are a few things that I was working on that aren't quite there yet. This is kind of glitchy. So this is what I'm going to be working on. But as of right now, I have... Oh, uh, yeah. There's still that that issue. I remember that issue. We maximize on play. Okay. So I have this, this weird offset. Anyways. So I have uh, been working on this uh, dragging to be able to drag components around. And then I'll work on, you know, containers where where you drag this, it pops into a container. And then this, you know, pops into a container, right? So I guess this is semi-important. This is more of the, uh, this is more of the, the markup system, which is basically this piece. So I guess this should be red. Why do I have two labels now? Why would it let you do that? Anyways, I'll figure that out. Why it has those labels. Why it has multiple. How do you delete them? Anyways. So that will be a red, because that, that's that's basically how this whole thing works. I guess how I did that was kind of how the process of how I'm going to go, be, uh, the, the order that I'm going to be going through them. All right, so we're not going to worry about the drag and drop and getting it to, to map to where my um, where my mouse is, but that's in the uh, mouse here, and then I have the code buffer, which is basically what controls the uh, this um, which basically controls this piece here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to map this guy here so we see full scene view. And what I'm going to do for right now, oops, just going to move this guy out of the way. I'm going to start from scratch and see what's going on here. Okay, so here's the standard input field. Here's the the uh, source image, color, material. Is that what I want? I want an input field, right? Yes. Okay. So the issue, I believe, was that it works correctly here. I guess, oh, I guess the enter doesn't work here. Tab works. 
I guess it just like loses focus when you enter. So we gotta fix that. So while this is selected and you hit enter, stay in, you know, stay in this piece. And, you know, enter the line down. Okay. So that's basically what I wanted to do. So what this testing is here is it is in this code buffer it's in this code buffer so I'll call this text field okay so from the text field I believe my scripts are on here we go So the code field, let's just do text fields for right now. So that is the current issue with um, these text fields, is that when you hit this button and it loads it, right, it doesn't it just clips it just clips the code here see see like you could can you oh you can you can scroll the the, the issue with it right now is that you can't so i guess you can scroll you can't so what's not working right now if i cuz you guys don't have the mouse is that if i click in here and i use the scroll wheel it doesn't move, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't scroll. So generally what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to be able to do, um, UI and then you do a scroll view. And then see here, I could actually scroll inside of the scroll view. just parenting see so what I did on this the reason why it works on this is because I did a um, oh and the enter works over here it doesn't work over here There it goes. Anyways, um, over here it works, and the scroll wheel works. So what I did on this guy is I did like a um, but the issue is that when you try to click back here, the little the the carrot or the uh, the little piece here does not. allow it to go so I mean this is a uh, this is a this is a, something that I got stuck that I was stuck on and uh, something that um, will need fixing because if you go in here and you have this full thing like I could I could do this with the arrow keys but I can't I can't scroll in there I could scroll in here so I need to be able to put this scroll box in here and then that would be done because then I'm able to edit the text I'm able to I have not added the ability to be able to drag this dialogue around so that would be the next thing is to be able to drag the dialogue around
does it have? I know that in UI it has a type draggable or something like that. Event system and stuff like that. Anyways, so that is a few things that we need to work on. So that is the current state of uh, where we are, which is pretty much, you know, next to, I have one script done, which is allowing the mouse control, allowing you to pick up an object and then move it. But uh, this guy is not quite perfect as far as where my mouse is. And of course, as you see, this, this code bait, this uh, file is only one line long, is only one line. And then in the event system, um, in the event system, I have it where uh, vertical axis and button cancel button and put actions per second. It's too late for this module. Um, I have something when you when you do the scroll wheel, yeah, on mouse on mouse uh, on drag. So when I drag over this guy, it uh, basically re it goes into this mouse control, this uh, mouse control um, script, and works on that. So whenever I go in and click on this and then move it, it will go into that script and say, "Hey, I'm moving this node. Can you move that particular node?" Um, and then I pass it in in the mouse control. I pass it the type, yeah, the game object, which game object I want to move, and then I allow it to uh, transform the position, so move the position of the object to where the mouse position is, while I have it dragging. So I have to be continuously dragging. Once I let my cursor, once I let my cursor drop. It won't let it drag anymore. So once they let it drop, it places it. It's, the issue is that once I move, it jumps over there. So I have to figure out what the issue with that is. It's getting the, the mouse position wrong. So what it should say, what it should do is I should have a script where it tells me when I hold my mouse down, you know, what uh, position on the screen am I here. It might also be, I think the reason why it's so off like that is because now I have a second screen. Could be a possibility. And what it's letting me do is when you see that cursor disappear like that, it's going to my second screen. So I'm wondering if, because I'm not in the app, that is causing issues. So let's... Let's do for the last second here. Let's do a uh, for the last two two minutes of this video. This little the second intro video, I guess you could call it, about where we are right now. Let's go ahead and hit uh, the build, and then uh, and then let's just do full screen, non windowed, full screen, fantastic display one and display two. Oh, they got a nice new splash screen. Come here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so it still has it still has that issue even in the uh, it's off by quite a bit diagonally. This one's off by quite a bit diagonally. But as you see, it packed my uh, and also the scroll does not work here, but the scroll works here. So I mean it's just uh, just something that we, but this one this one the carrot works correctly. So all I wanted to do is be able to scroll through this text document. As of right now, it's gonna work fine if you if you want just the uh, if you want just the keyboard to work. So as as you see here, I mean this technically already works, but there's a few extra things that we need to do as far as getting the mouse wheel to work. And also, you know, I want to be able to click on something and this dialog pop up and then load that text in there. So those are those are a few things. And also I want to be able to have a because you can't 
you can't like hit escape and get out. So you I also need to have a uh, a escape option in the scene so that I don't have to escape here and then close the window. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's basically what we're looking at doing. I'm showing you guys uh, what what uh, uh, what we need to do here. So basically, I need the scroll the scroll um, scroll view inside of the text box to be able to scroll up and down inside the text box rather than using the arrow keys up and down. I did do a hack where I did it in the script by basically moving this this text up it actually what it is is a full-size text box so if you look here um, so I have a text and then what I as you see the text text box is huge and then when I let me go ahead and split screen it for you I totally forgot how, there we go. Okay, so when I go in into the app, oops, not maximize on play. I'm going to, so this is how I have it right now. Maximize on play, and then I go in here. If you see, I'm actually just scrolling the text box, which, and then I have a mask outside, which basically clips all the text off that, um, that scrolls past it. So whenever this, whenever the text scrolls past this part, it basically clips the text off. But uh, because of that, whenever you're in in here, and that's why the enter probably works. I guess the text box works different than the input. Oh, that's why, because I had the text field as submit. Te text field, multi-line submit. Multi-line multi -line, new line. Now the enter works. Okay, so that was the issue. All right, so that's, so yeah, there's just, you know, some issues like that, and there's probably something else here that I'm missing. So I will do the rest of the 30 minutes for today researching how to, um, uh, researching through the documentation on how to get that to work, and then I'll relay back to you guys how I figured that out. All right, I'd like to thank you guys for watching the second video of the CodeFlow product development series. I'll catch you guys uh, next week in the next episode and also all my other development uh, development series uh, for my shredder and stuff like that and also the multi-shooter in the meantime. All right, guys, well, I'll see you guys in uh, later videos. If you like this video, please subscribe for more videos like in this series and other series as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.